everyone and welcome to episode 75 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. And I'm Weston Pew and we've got a great show in store for you today. We really do. Lots going on in the market. There, there really is. It's uh, it's spring. Spring is here for sure. Just like the tulips, the for sale signs have hit the yards and yes. it seems like they are pretty much across the, it's not one portion of Dallas that they're more predominant in. Mm -mm. It just seems like right now we've seen so much more. Um, one of the things that we did to kind of get an overview of this is we looked at um, some reports that were inside MLS, which is our multiple listing service, to see what's happened. And we're taking a snapshot of the of the last three days on the market, and there's quite a bit going on. Yeah, there have been just uh, just short of about 1,200 homes that have come on the market uh, into the MLS, and then there's another 160 or so that are coming soon. And that coming soon status is um, where a house is about to come on the market. The M You can put these into MLS up to 14 days in advance, and so that's really where those are. Um, it's interesting that we're seeing about the same number of houses pinned yeah. as are new on the market. And so uh, pending, we had 1,332, uh, then, uh, yeah, 1,332 that went pending and 1,201 that went into the active option status. And that's in three days. In three days, oh, over the course of three days. So. And that active um, option is the actual first status change that mm -hmm. a contract goes into when it enters into the option period. And then from there, it moves into the pending status. Mm -hmm. And that's quite a bit. If you also then wanted to look and see at the sold number, and in the last three days, there's been 834 transactions that have closed, which again is pretty good. Yeah. Um, the, the rate continues. Um, we've also noticed that the number of expired, canceled, and withdrawn has really tapered off. Yes, so. tremendously. And uh, either there were, have been several uh, articles written about the number of delinquencies, mortgage delinquencies and foreclosures filings is now at like a 26-year low. And that's a great thing. And you and I talk about all the time is that the current market right now that we're in, I don't think will ever be like a 08, 09 for the simple fact that there are so many people right now that have substantial amounts of money that they're putting into to make it a very healthy economy. Yeah. Not and these interest only arms. Exactly. And the, the, you know, the economy overall in, in our marketplace is really, uh, it, it's diversified where we're not so dependent on the energy industry. Right. We have a lot of financial sector that's come in. We have a lot of corporate headquarters here now. Tech has um, really begun to blow up. Tech's re yes, it has. And so that uh, adds to the stability of the market and, and certainly to the stability of the real estate market. And last week we featured one of our own listings, um, Fenton, mm -hmm. 7429 Fenton. And that house came on the market and Saturday was the first day that showings took place. And we actually had an offer that night and were able to execute by about 9.30 on mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, I think that you and I, um, at times we were able to work with sellers and really provide them with a really detailed list of things that need to get done all the way from a new inspection to paint and whatever else that's on or discovered on that. And these, this couple actually did that and it made a huge difference. It, it really did. And, um, you know, a lot of times we uh, can overwhelm a seller a little bit uh, at times, you know, in, in trying to help them get their house ready. And, uh, a lot of times they, you know, they can, people are busy, people have lives and they've yeah. got kids and they've got dogs and, you know, the, it, it, getting ready to put your house on the market is, is a challenge sometimes. And, but, uh, I, I think that, you know, through our process, we've really kind of identified what we see the buyers are going to be looking for uh, in that house. And and, and we, we get the seller to do those things. When they do it, it's like, bam, it is the, it's the magic formula. The other thing, too, is that by doing um, such a detailed list and then highlighting elements that we think should or probably will come up from a buyer standpoint, when it does come up, it's kind of like, 
you're like, wow, it's mm -hmm. a little more believable because yeah. they're like, really? And we're like, yeah, this is what's going to happen next. Yeah. So, um, one of the other things that um, was interesting in the market um, showing this week was the first time ever I had shown a home and it didn't have what they call central heat and air. Mm -hmm. It had mini split. Mm -hmm. And it was a very interesting concept. I've never seen it before. And I thought this is something that seems to be like a, a really great solution for um, an addition that you're adding mm -hmm. on, um, a renovation in an older home that doesn't have an HVAC system. Mm -hmm. And I was really impressed with it. Yeah, they're, they're highly efficient. Uh, lots of companies make them now. Mitsubishi makes them, LG makes them. There are uh, several other manufacturers and, and they, if you, if you do have a home, especially, um, you know, a lot of the, 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 the modern style or the mid-century homes uh -huh. don't have a lot of attic space. And because they don't have a lot of attic space, you have trouble running duct work, um, especially if it's a slab foundation. And these mini-split systems allow a, a homeowner to put a blower unit within one specific room and, the, and even more blower units within, within other rooms, right. and then um, have one central compressor that can run all of those off of it. So, and One of the big things, too, is that it's ductless. So mm -hmm. the, the duct work doesn't actually have to go through the attic, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of times that's where um, compromise happens within the duct work. Insulation heats that up, and what you get sometimes is that blast of warm air first before the cool air. And you always run into that fact if they're compromises that cool air is blowing into the attic. Mm -hmm. This apparatus, the actual mechanism is inside the room. And so you can really also determine that this room is at 62, mm -hmm. whereas that one's at 74. Yeah. And you can play as you're sleeping or awake or not in mm -hmm. the room. Um, we had uh, some clients that sold a house over in uh, Northwest Dallas, Tim and Eric, uh -huh. that had uh, the home they bought had an addition on it, okay. and the addition on the back really didn't get cold enough for them, and so they put one of these in that master bedroom because they wanted their master bedroom at 65 degrees at night, <laughs> and, yeah, and it, it allows them to do that without you know, taxing the rest of the system and keeping the rest of the house at that temperature. Absolutely. So again, if you're looking for something that could um, help with that, it is called a mini split. It is really easy to Google. There's a lot of opportunity out there. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear about those. Uh, if you plug one in, let us know. That might be another great second segment for us to get in on the show one yeah, time. Yeah, we'd love to hear what your, what your experience with them is. So, Well, last week you had Jeremy on the show and Jeremy came on and talked about some of the different um, lending programs that he had mm -hmm. and what's going kind of on in the market. And we thought this would be a really good follow-up segment is to follow up with homes that are um, what we would consider maybe for a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Price point is really a, a big dictator of, of, you know, where people are, where people are looking geographically. And so we're, a, we're looking in the Oak Cliff market today. <clears throat> now there are a lot of neighborhoods in Dallas and we've been showing right. in them that are still in that under three hundred thousand dollar price point that you can get a really good home, mm -hmm. but we we chose three in different sections of Oak Cliff because one we love Oak Cliff. Yep. Uh, number two, it is an up and coming area. Uh, number three, it is highly convenient to to pretty much you do anything anything you'd like to do, and it is one of those neighborhoods to me that has such funk and such charm. Right one of the rare areas of Dallas you can get such great topography in. One of the very rares. And we also have had clients throughout the years that cannot be on what they would call the east side of um, the big five mm -hmm. or in downtown mm -hmm. because maybe they work in Arlington, they work in Irving, and that just doesn't work for their flow, which right. we completely understand. So this has really added a solution for them that has never been quite as have as many options as what we have today. And so if we look at the first one, it's going to be 2132 Leander Drive. And this is um, a great area of um, Oak Cliff. Mm -hmm. And it, lots of homes in this area have this really charming um, feel to them over there in Stevens Park Village. One of the great things is that this is um, Fort Worth Highway, really easy connection, mm -hmm. which is the main way to get onto 30 in this area. Yes. So again, you don't have as much noise as if you were up against like Thunder Road on 635. Um, you do have a bit of a buffer, and so that in itself can and, and, and get rid of any questions you had about noise. Yeah, this one, the Stevens Park Village sits up on a bluff there, and, mm -hmm. and Interstate 30 is probably, I'm going to say, probably 100 feet below where you are. And so the um, 
uh, the neighborhood itself is highly accessible. I mean, you could be in downtown within 10 minutes if you lived in Stevens Park Village. Um, Stevens Park Village is, really has two sections in it. Mm -hmm. It has the eastern section that are all 1930s and 1940s style homes, real charmers, mostly Austin, St um, Austin Stone. And um, it is one of the areas that has the largest cluster of Charles Dilbeck homes. There are 11 Charles Dilbeck homes um, who is a very noted right. Dallas architect um, that just builds a, a really unique home. The western section was built in the 40s and the 50s, and they're more of that uh, uh, post, post-war era type home that are kind of cottage style, but really a, a great cohesive neighborhood and such a great neighborhood association. The other thing too about this neighborhood is this neighborhood is beginning to see the gentrification move in. Um, LA Fitness just built a really large gym, mm -hmm. one of the first large um, commercial chain gyms that has entered into the cliff is actually right at the entrance of this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so you, again, you're seeing um, the amenities that more and more people want with the lifestyle. Um, it's very, very unique. It's the closest thing to Austin that Dallas has. So if you're looking for this, um, it's a great home. So this one again is 2132 Leander Drive. One of the great things about this one is, as Jeff was saying, um, the number of cottage homes. It's really great um, tree-lined neighborhood throughout this place big open windows that are floor to ceiling inside that's another feature of a lot of the homes that you find down here uh, front porch is definitely a get out and meet your neighbor front porch the uh, rooms are so light and bright and this was of that era where um, hardwood floors were the thing to do uh, you have such great outdoor views from these the uh, the, the trees are mature the trees uh, give you shade for the house, which also help with your energy efficiency. And then you get these really large oversized room. Uh, you can see here how this was built uh, with the openness from the kitchen into the dining room. And uh, another thing I like about the style of these homes is you can go very simplistic mm -hmm. or you can go very ornate. And whatever style you have, it fits right into the home. And one of the great things about this one also is the kitchen has been quite redone. Um, it actually sits at the back of the house, and these are uh, glass hexagonal tiles, and they've refaced all of the cabinets in this area. One of the great things, too, that we notice is that this has a copper um, hammered sink that was really a great add. One of those kind of like standout pieces. Gas is um, at the cooktop as well. So it's a really open, spacious. Again, you have a little space there if you want to put your coffee or have a little bar on that other side of the fridge. That's not big enough for a bar. Well, in your world. <laughs> so this is going to be the master. Um, again, your uh, great rooms. Again, the windows are a really good size. The um, great thing about this house as well is that it's pier and beam as many are in this era. And one of the great things that people, if you don't know about this, a pier and beam will allow you to move the water and make renovations within a home super simple. This is the second bedroom and it connects versus a little bitty room that's gonna come up um, that probably at one point, I guessing was um, a porch and they've done a really good job of cladding it with um, shiplap and just making it a really interesting space in this mm -hmm. room. Yeah, and the, uh, this looks out on the backyard so you've got, and you've got access from both bedrooms so this could still be uh, kind of your, your backyard living space, right. could be uh, children's play space, could be works, uh, 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 you know, area for you if you work from home, mm -hmm. just a lot of flexibility and a really great backyard. The, uh, you can see that the electrical has been updated at some point in this, which in a lot of older homes is a big expense. The fence has been replaced. You've got this outdoor living space on the patio that is away from the home. Uh, where these owners have their grass gas grill and just a, a really wonderful outdoor space larger than you would probably get in many of the neighborhoods that are closer in and just to throw in real quick in 20 in uh, 19 they replaced the rain gutters the downspouts and the roof so that's a really um, excellent feature that this house has one thing about this roof also is that it is a class 4 hill resistant shingle roof and that is going to give you uh, quite a bit of a deduction on right. your uh, uh, on your home insurance. 2132 Leander Drive, a two-bedroom, one-bath, two-car garage, a little over 1,200 square feet, priced at 300000 and that brings this property in at 248.55 per square foot. Well, that is a, a great house, and we want to say thank you so much 
to Jed Dippery for allowing us to highlight this home. It's a wonderful home. And if you're also joining us on the um, on the uh, live, <laughs> what is it called? The Kathy. <laughs> invite group that we had watch party the watch party. Called, the watch party you'll notice that my phone just fell we had a makeshift <laughs> and so uh, if you saw that little tumble we're all okay zach's got it under <laughs> under control so uh, thanks zach for uh, handling that <laughs> we'll come more prepared next week for that that's okay all right now we're going to move over to 2560 wedgley drive in dallas texas yeah this is a really great uh condominium slash townhome community uh part of it was built i believe in the uh, part of it was built in the 1960s, if I'm not mistaken, and then this section of the community <clears throat> was built in 2016. And these are really wonderful uh, condos that are just around the corner from Stevens Park Village. Mm -hmm. uh, still have that great accessibility to hit I-30. Uh, you can also hit Hampton Road. Many people don't know that when you cross I-30, Hampton Road turns into Inwood Road. So you have that accessibility to Love Field, to the medical district, to really anywhere in that uh, that more core area that you need to be. And you said that Stevens Park was the highest place, but I really felt like when we were on Wedgley, I felt like that, that the way we, as we entered, mm -hmm. I felt like we were even higher over there. It was an interesting spot. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out and see which is higher. Yeah. Um, this is a, a really unique um, property that was built. When we went inside of it, this is the first time we've ever seen it. So that's a um, hardy siding with um, stone or a brick finish and it was a really great single family home when you walk inside it has a, again high ceilings nice light and bright but it also has um, cement floors and I didn't know that this was going to have the cement floors and one of the things when you do install the cement floors is that does help um, increase your um, energy efficiency rating and so it kind of helps neutralize and carbon footprints and whatnot yeah, and this is a very modern style, big open windows. The owners have um, really cool pleated shades in these, and they have them throughout. Granite countertops in the kitchen, uh, nice 42-inch uppers, stainless steel <clears throat> appliance package, has an island there that uh, opens up to the dining room and, and still gives you that very popular um, open feeling that so many people want when they're entertaining now. Absolutely. And one of the other things, too, is that this has a 16-seer HVAC system. Typically, it's 19 is the very high. 16 is really common. Um, and, but it also has foam insulation. So put these two things together, and you're talking about a house that's really well laid out, really well designed, but also doesn't cost a lot to heat and cool um, during the hot Texas months. So this is an interesting um, home. I did like the way that they did the blinds as well so that, that these can open, but you can also pull them down just a hair, and they'll completely block out. Upstairs, we had um, two bedrooms, and this is the first, and this is the master. Really, again, sits at the back of the house. It's a great size. Um, and then this is the second bedroom bathroom. Yes. Um, and these are all finished out very nicely. They, uh, they have the big 42-inch uppers. They have the shaving height uh, vanities, the uh, uh, court, uh, I'm sorry, the marble countertops. And uh, you have wood floors upstairs, mm -hmm. which I think give it warmth. Where downstairs you've got right. the more modern feel. You get up where you know where the the sleeping goes on, and you want that warmth and comfort. And I misspoke. That first image was of the upstairs guest bedroom. This right here is the master, and it has a large walk-in closet. The closet you can't tell, but actually runs that entire wall where all the pictures are hung. So it's really deep, almost the depth of that. And then here you can see from the other angle you have the entrance is on the left-hand side and then the entrance into the bathroom is there on the right-hand side. And this bathroom does have the, the big stand-up walk-in shower in it, which so many people are going toward there. Uh, you know, a trend <clears throat> we're seeing is the master bathroom uh, do, does do not necessarily have to have the tub anymore. Right. does have the, the shaving height vanity, uh, marble quartz countertop, whichever that might be really great fixtures and this is one of the things i really liked about it was mm -hmm. that you've got this covered outdoor space that is really fantastic and it is uh, the way that they've done the board on board fence they've stained it they've got a topper on it as well it has a sense of privacy to it which i think so many homeowners want and then last but not least this complex does come with its own pool hot tub lounging area and this is a great extra that you get when you actually add up the hoas and what they all include um, they're 150 dollars a month mm -hmm. if you actually think about what it costs to have your pool serviced chemicals 
It's easily one hundred fifty dollars a month. Easily, and so twenty five sixty Wedgley. It's a two bedroom, two and a half bath, two parking space, a unit, seventeen hundred square feet, built in two thousand sixteen, and it is priced at three hundred sixty three thousand dollars, which is two twelve a square foot. We want to say thank you so much to Kathy. Um, Hewitt and Jason Salcedo for allowing us to highlight their home. It is amazing. It, it really is. Thank you very much to both of you. So now we're going to head to an, uh, an area of, Dow of Oak Cliff where I actually had my very mm -hmm. first listing ever. Um, Can was, we bring up the picture of him standing in front of the sign that I... Did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done that. That would have been so funny. I was like, what? Um, but this is, uh, we've kind of had a debate on how to say this street name because it's 2832 Aaliyah, 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 Aaliyah Drive. Mm -hmm. And this is in, down towards the, um, Bonniewood was the street that I sold Keast, on. Keastwood, South Keastwood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such an interesting area. Again, the topography is really great. It's so funny when you drive into these neighborhoods, it feels like a time warp mm -hmm. because the homeowners that have these homes have been there for so long. Um, that it's just kind of stopped very very mature trees in this area so y you instantly know that you are not in suburbia yeah, that is correct and you have so much outdoor activity to do here um, as you can see on the map you've got the oak cliff nature preserve there which is a lot of hiking trails <laughs> through there i've done that several times and it's a great place to get away uh, keist park is a wonderful city operated uh, park that has hiking trails around it uh, it has baseball diamonds, it has uh, soccer fields, it has picnic tables, it, and you that is just a, a real gem of the city. Yep, and the great thing too is that because of the way Keist runs, you can catch on Westmoreland or Hampton and be back onto one of the major highways 30 um, if you need it to be. Otherwise, you can just carry it all the way over to 67 and jump on and head north on 35. So again, this is a super easy and commutable neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, one of the neighborhoods, again, we like this one because this neighborhood feels like one of the ones that could have some exponential growth in pricing. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It's poised. It's situated. The lots are nice. Um, the houses are of good. They have that structural quality. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we walk into houses and we know that there's going to be an appreciation, but the integrity of a home might be a little shiftier. Mm -hmm. There's so much stone that's in the Oak Cliff area that I think that you get houses that can be, you know, 50, 60 years old and have a smidgen of movement mm -hmm. in them. And so this is one of them. And so we'll go ahead and start looking through the pictures. And this is an interesting one because of the way the topography is. We talked about how much topography there is. And this almost looks like a split level if you're up north. But because we don't have basements, it is not a split level. Right. Um, the uh, the <clears throat> walk up to this is really nice. You've got the different tiers of the front yard, the big mature oak trees. It really is lit very well in the evening. Um, as you come in, you get to see this really great open living room, big stone fireplace on the end of it, perfect place for a TV. You've got the, the built-ins uh, that are already there. And this room could be organized so many different ways and, and work in so many different ways. Uh, configurations yeah and the great thing too is it comes right off this kitchen this kitchen has been renovated it has the amenities that so many people want from the gas uh, already the fridge has been there and that's so important because a lot of times people don't realize that doesn't necessarily convey again we're looking at a color palette that is very um, buyer um, centric right now this is what we see many times and this is what they want so it makes it so simple inside of here. Um, they've also replaced the faucet um, and the chandelier that's there in the breakfast nook. Yeah, and there was a huge pantry there, by the yeah. way, with that laundry room. Um, this is one of the bedrooms with the barn, store, uh, barn door style uh, door. This is the master bedroom that has a, a really nice bathroom just off of it. And here's a picture of the master bath, which was redone, I'm guessing probably within the last 10 years or so, travertine, uh, travertine <clears throat> tile. It has the, uh, the horizontal decorative tile that goes all the way around. A great little inset there if you have a little chest of drawers that you uh, need to have a little storage in the bathroom right. for. But again, they have the stand-up shower and that makes so much sense nowadays. And if you're one of those homeowners that really enjoys um, their outdoor time, this is the house that you really need to get into. Um, there are so many opportunities with this backyard to make it really come alive and, and set it up the way you want. There already is a fireplace in there. I don't believe that has gas, but that could be an easy thing to fix. 
just a lot of extras in this space. It could make so many different portions of this backyard unique and one of a kind of the house, whether it was just an, a, a, a pergola or whether something like a raised flower beds. Yep. So 2832 Elahi Drive is a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, 2188 square feet. It was built in 1959 and it is priced at 299, which brings it in about 136 a square foot. And if you watch our show regularly and you hear us talk about the dollar per square foot on most houses, they usually range between 225 and 300 a square foot. This is a really good value right. based on where it is. And we want to say thank you so much to Adam Murphy for allowing us to highlight your home. It's a wonderful home. Thank you, Adam. And we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. There are lots of ways to keep up with us. Visit and like our Facebook page to watch us live and get updates about future show topics. Also, visit our Instagram account where you can see the latest homes we have for sale. You can also check out our website at updikepew.com where you can create customized searches of active and sold homes that you may find of interest. If you'd like to know how much your home is worth, visit homeprice.fyi and you can get a price instantly. Just enter your address and a couple of other pieces of information and we will email you a price. If you are on the go and podcasts are better for you, our second segments are available on iTunes and Spotify. Last of all, you can reach out to us by phone or text at 214-377-2223. And welcome back to our second segment today of episode 75. Excellent time. Excellent time to get started on this next topic. Um, it was kind of a... A little cramming it together to make this work out, but I think that we really came up with a really timely um, second topic. It was it was really interesting because these were all things that we were talking about already today. Yeah, and so I mean I think I think we were actually discussing every bit of the thing that, that we're going to talk about today. So what we're going to do today is talk about things that you should be doing if you're spring homeowners. Um, or what to do if you are quarantined. Yep. So sit back and uh, we're going to go over some top, our top five, I think. Yep. So there, so things that you have to do to get ready in the spring. Um, there are, there are just so many things. And I think number one is whether you have owned your home for 20 years or if you just bought a home, it is time to, to go back and look and make sure that you still have your, your exemptions on your property correctly. Because people think that that just naturally happens at the closing table, and it really doesn't. And so if you close and live in it the, after your first year, you need to go back and check because that's when it's time to get that done. Yes. And even sometimes people fill it out and it doesn't work right. And so year three is when you really have to double check to make sure that it get, did get stuck on there. Yeah, we've had several instances where people have filed their homestead exemptions and for whatever reason, those have fallen off the property. And I mean, errors occur. Errors I, do you occur. Know, you figure how many pieces but it's of a property. Headache. It is. It's, and if you are not on top of it and you don't verify it every year, then what can happen is that next year when <clears throat> the property tax bill comes out and it's unexempted, your mortgage company is going to pay that bill on your behalf in most instances. Correct. And you're not really going to be paying attention to it until the next May when you get your analysis from your <laughs> mortgage company about your escrow account, and that's when you're going to realize, hey, something's wrong. Right. And there are so many things that have happened at that point that take time to undo <clears throat> that it, it really does create a hassle. So just, you know, at some time between January 1 and April 30th of every year, verify that your homestead exemptions are still there. Yep, and we'll also have um, an article inside of our newsletter where we're actually going to list out where you can go on there. We'll also put that in the comments so that you know and can click easily to get to the um, taxing authorities in order to verify or apply for your um, homestead exemption. Yes, and there's two other homestead exemptions that I think is important pe for people to be aware of. One is uh, the over 65 exemption. And so Correct. if you're one of those people who happens to turn 65 years old, then... Um, that is going to be something that you'll want to apply for because there is an additional level of savings mm -hmm. once you reach that once you reach that milestone. Also, if you've had some form of disability, that uh, uh, there is a possibility that you could qualify for an additional exemption on it. So right. just be aware that those are out there and um, there's opportunity for you all the time. And so the next one that we're going to talk about is go ahead and bring it up, Zig. This is so fly. Reevaluating your finances, and we just talked about this. Um, 
with Jeremy again last week, but rates are at a 50-year low. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing so many people flood into the lender right now that um, just talking on Sunday night with um, another lender that we've done business with before in the past saying how that they're not taking any other new applicants right now. Yeah, the, the system is so flooded with all of those people coming in. And, and they're, you know, the ones that, that have already started that process, uh, there's a lot of reasons to consider it. Um, we have clients that are comfortable with their mortgage payment. They, mm -hmm. they are, they're comfortable with how much they pay each month. And so what they're choosing to do is refinance and take a shorter mortgage term. Right. Um, we have an instance right now where we calculated a mortgage for some people and they have, uh, they have 12 and a half years left on their mortgage. And so by the interest, by the uh, refinancing mm -hmm. and the reduction in the interest rate, they're keeping their monthly payment the same, but they're actually shaving two and a half years off of their mortgage because they're, they're now on a 10 year mortgage. Which is, uh, again, these are all little baby steps that you put together in order to really aggregate um, a working portfolio that is a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And when you take an advantage of these, whether it's dropping your taxes, like we just talked about, or it's refinancing your house, it really begins to add up. Um, and it's not something always prevalent right now, but in the end, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, it, it is a good long-term planning uh, lever to have. Yep. And so if you haven't refinanced your house yet, you need a lender, we would be happy to point you in the direction and give you a couple of names mm -hmm. um, and make that a possibility for you. But it is something that needs to be um, done ASAP. Absolutely. And our next slide. And our last point is talking about outdoor prep. Outdoor. And I think that's where I got my cough from because I was outdoor prepping mm -hmm. and I was using the weed blower and I think I inhaled a lot of dust. Um, and junk, but um, that is what we would talk about. Weed and feed your lawn, which is critical. If you're going to plant, um, and it's time for us to bring on our, our horticulturist again, but it is definitely the time to get shrubs and trees in the ground so mm -hmm. that they can have the, the most amount of time mm -hmm. in the soil before the really hot temperatures of the summer get right. hold. And uh, it is also that time of year to get your sprinkler checked out. Uh, there are things that happen to it during the winter that you don't know about because Correct. the the heads freeze, the grounds freeze, they get cracked. Um, there was a, uh, an instance with mine where it had uh, not this year, but a couple of years ago, I had a really bad leak that had occurred in my main line coming in, hmm. and it was underground. So I didn't know it was there until I got my water bill the next month. And I went from using, I don't know, 300 gallons a month to like 1,500 gallons a wow. month. And, you know, by that time, again, I had to, then I had to have the repair done. And then I had to go to the city and beg for forgiveness and ask for some money back. And, you know, the city's not real easy not to let easy. all that go. So, not at all. But definitely get your, your sprinkler system checked out. Uh, there are a lot of companies out there this time of year that run a $99 special to it, and I think it's worth it every time. The other thing, too, and it's this time of season, you don't want to get caught um, towards July and August, but have the HVAC service now. Get mm -hmm. ahead of that. I guarantee you that um, anything that you have done this month will be a lot less expensive than in July, August. Absolutely. Demand curve is really specific when it comes to this. And the other thing too that people don't always take into consideration are parts and a lag time on getting some things. So even if it's an easy fix, that part might not be there, which mm -hmm. could mean, you know, four, five, two weeks of uncomfortable nights in Texas heat. Yes. Yeah. And that's not going to work. Yeah. And so those, those are really our tips for the, for the spring market and what to do to get your house ready, because we are going to be heading into the, the, I guess the warmer months here yep. very, very quickly. So oh, the last thing, I'm sorry, I, I jumped We've off. got one more. We did have one more, and that was now's the time of year to get any wood rot on your house taken care of and get those places repainted. Yeah. Um, that is one of the best insurance policies <laughs> you can have in maintaining a home is making sure that your paint is uh, not just fresh, but that everything is sealed well because paint does secure the wood, and when you get cracks or you get separations in it, that's where you get water penetration and that's what causes problems long term. It is. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed another exciting episode of Sold with Updike Pew. It's really been a great time today. Yep. And so just remember, we want to be your realtors for life.